want to talk to you about traditional blade servers. Not Cisco UCS blade servers, but traditional blade servers. We have here a traditional blade chassis with 16 blades in it. This chassis is 10U, and you can see it saves a lot of space. If I could fit 16 servers into 10 rack units, where here 16 servers would have taken 32 rack units, I really solved the problem of space. The other exciting thing about blades, the perception, is that you save the problem of time. So you can save time in provisioning blades. At least that's the perception. Here, I could provision a new server in about four hours, a lot of cabling. Here, yes, I could put in a new blade in less than four hours, but let's talk about some of the complexities that have to go into this. So, I talked about the things that you consume in an ESX host. I talked about consuming network, I talked about consuming storage, I talked about consuming power, and I talked about consuming space, I also talked about consuming dollars and consuming time. So let's get back into those again. And let's start with network. So this is a blade environment, 16 blades, you have the chassis, the chassis has blade management, the chassis has built-in SAM switches, that's another misconception about going to blades, is that you actually use less SAM switches. There actually are SAM switches in the chassis that you have to manage as individual SAM switches, so you don't necessarily have less SAM switches in your environment. The other misconception is you use less network switches. Again, not necessarily, maybe. Let's get into that. So let's talk about the consumption of network. Remember over here when I said for a well-designed ESX environment, you would want to have eight network cards and you'd want to have those separation of duties? In the traditional chassis-based um, blade environment, you're traditionally going to have two 1 gig NICs in each of those blades. Newer blades, newer chassis are offering more NICs, but they come with their own complexity and cost. But let's just look at this for now as two NICs. So one NIC is going to plug to this internal Ethernet switch. Let's say this is a gigabit Ethernet switch in the chassis. And this one's also going to plug into an internal um, backplane back into this Ethernet switch in the chassis. So two 1 gig NICs. Now here's, here's the part that we have to be concerned about is how do we connect that network back into my aggregation layer, my access layer, or my core? You're going to usually do that through some sort of ether channel mechanism. And I might connect four here and four here. That's going to give me a total of eight gigs of throughput into this chassis. More throughput would either mean I need to have 10 gig switches here or I need to have more one gig ports. So from the blade to the internal switch out to the external switch. That's how we consume network. We're going to have to do some different things other than what we did over here to get all those needs of my service console, beam motion, fault tolerance, and my virtual machine network. I'm going to have less bandwidth here in this default configuration. I could go to a more advanced configuration or in newer chassis I could go to 10 gig, but as I said, it's somewhat complex to do that in a chassis environment. Consuming storage. I'm going to consume storage in the same way. I'm going to connect from the backplane to these internal fabric switches. And then I'm going to have to connect these fabric switches into my existing fabric. Probably multiple points of connection. You're going to want to ISL trunk these. You're going to want to work closely with your storage team to do all this back-end provisioning. And of course, work closely, very, very closely with your network team to make sure you're not causing any loops in the network and that you're configuring spanning tree appropriately. So a lot of stuff to con think about when putting in a new chassis just to support these 16 blades. What else do we consume? We consume power. So probably 220 volts um, into your PDUs. And then finally we consume time, right? And we said that there was supposed to be a big time saver in blades. There is a time saver once you get the chassis in, but the chassis itself I think we're four hours for one blade here. You're talking about four days for the whole chassis. And then maybe per blade, if you're thinking about one hour per blade. Now again, another misconception or perception is that blades are perfect for boot from sand. In reality, they're not that much more perfect than these servers are for boot from sand. 
The thought is, if one of these blades goes bad and it's boot from sand, I pull the blade out, I throw another blade in, and magically it's going to boot and everything's going to be fine. In reality, you're going to have to configure the BIOS, you're going to have to configure um, sand zoning, you're going to have to configure maybe some things to do with the MAC address and IP addresses. There are some things you have to configure, so it's not simply plug and play in a boot from sand environment. We also have management. So we have the management of the chassis itself. So I can manage these 16 hosts. I've got to have network connectivity and management there as well. The chassis itself comes with a cost. So the cost of the chassis, let's just say for this example, it's a 55K chassis. Chassis can cost you know, a little bit less than that or a lot more than that, depending on how many switches you decide to put in that chassis. So the chassis itself has a high cost. The blades have a similar cost to traditional rack mount servers. There's a RAM limitation, however. You're not going to be able to put as much RAM in traditional blade servers as you can in traditional rack mount servers. There's a RAM limit. There's a network card limit. There's a high cost of these chassis. And every time you add a chassis, you're going to be paying this price. Plus, you're going to be paying for this four days of time. So I had a buddy that worked at an organization. They did traditional blade solutions like this. And nobody wanted to be the guy who had to pay for the 17th server. Right? They all got the crocodile arms. I don't want to write that check. I don't want to sign that bill. Um, because I've got to pay 55 k plus the cost of that server. That's, uh, that's a lot of work. Now, the other thing to think about is management. Right? I want to manage everything as one big farm of servers. However, if you do something like this, you're going to be managing it as isolated pools of 16 servers. So I'm not really solving the problem of sim you know, I'm not simplifying management. Um, my costs are actually greater, a lot of complexity, and again, the real problems I've solved is I've solved it's the problem of space, less space, less time to configure individual blades, but as you create more islands of blades and chassis, it's more islands of management and lots of network switches, lots of sand switches. In fact, more sand switches in this environment to manage than you have to manage in that environment. So we've improved some things. We haven't fixed everything, so hopefully it's going to get better as I continue.